Hey everybody, this is the setup stage and probably round one of Blackstone Fortress. There's not a whole lot to set up that isn't already set up. So this is the box, but it's it's not complete. I took a bunch of stuff out. So lots of rule books. There's rules, there's combat there's combat rules, there's background, precipice rules, data sheets. Data sheets I don't need for this game. Those are for Warhammer 40,000. Background is fun to read, really useful if you haven't read the book. Blackstone Fortress uh, has details about the characters too. And this is kind of important because these are the explorers. These are the people, these are the player characters essentially. So there's Janus Drake, Esper Locarno, Taddeus the Purifier, Pius Vorn. Amelin, Shadow Guide, Gaek, you are 025, and then Rain and Rouse. So, this particular game, you do actually have to build the miniatures, but they're super easy to build. I mean, I've built them, so you're not going to be seeing that, but just to sort of fair warning, unlike a lot of other games where you just buy it and you get the miniatures sort of as plastic molded pieces these are actually bits and pieces and you have to press them together it doesn't require glue or anything it's actually a really simple build and then they're really good for painting if you want to paint them and then for combat encounters you have these hex hex i want to say grids but they're they're not really grids they're bits and pieces of a board and your combat card tells you how to arrange them and we'll we'll be doing quite a lot of that but before we get to that stuff we need to assemble an encounter an exploration deck so the exploration deck is uh, this deck here and you take one two three four combat cards and then four uh, challenge cards take them randomly and assemble them into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. This is considered one expedition. So when you send your explorers into the Blackstone Fortress, they're going to be doing eight, eight exploration cards worth of, of tasks. The, the next thing is to choose the explorers there like like you saw in the book there are eight I have chosen um, Janus Drake the rogue explorer Amelin shadow guide the Aldari ranger Taddeus the purifier keeper of the Imperial Creed and his loyal disciple Pius Vorn who he rescued off of like a hive world out of a gang life and she now serves him and protects him and is fiercely loyal to him for the solo playthrough you have to choose four players that's just how the game is balanced it assumes there are four player characters so even as just a solo player it, it's four player characters that's a lot to control that's a lot of turns it's a lot of maintenance that's probably one of the most, I guess, really sort of a vaguely frustrating part of the game is that you do have to deal with so many different explorers. But as weaknesses go, that's not that bad. All right, so everyone starts out technically on the space station, which is this card stock here. And uh, there are destiny die on the space station, which I'll roll at the beginning of combat. But for now, uh, I guess I should put them there. For now, they're just, um, they exist. They're not available for anything. They're just extra dice that eventually someone will be able to use. Having chosen my explorers, I need to gather up their ships and move their ships to the support side. The support side has options that explorers can call upon once 
during an expedition. Now, Pius Vorn and Taddeus the Purifier arrive on one ship, uh, the Clarion, so to fill up this fourth spot, there's a... I just drew another ship uh, of an explorer that I'm not using currently, but the assumption is that this is a crowded place. A lot of people come here to Precipice to venture out into the Blackstone Fortress, so there are other ships. So those exist. This doesn't really need to be on screen exactly. We'll know that it exists. In theory, I will remember to use the ship abilities because they are very useful, like sometimes really useful. So ideally, I will not forget to do that. Exploration deck, I'll just put that over there on the um, on the space station card. The explorers are on this uh, maglev elevator chamber that takes them from the space station precipice into this interstellar dungeon called the Blackstone Fortress. Each player has a character card. Each character card has four slots for what's called activation dice. So those will get rolled every time co combat starts and slotted into one of these four sp spaces. And then to take an action, I'll use up one of those dice. The values on the dice control what kind of actions the player character can take. Many actions require just a one. Like your basic attack, you only need to spend a, a one on a die. For more advanced actions, you need higher rolls. The advanced actions are detailed typically as attack actions. And the attack actions are governed by the character's miniatures and what kind of weapons they have available on the miniature. So it's what you see is what you get. So she's got Amelin's Shadow Guide here, has a really, really long sniper rifle and this cool uh, purple power blade. And accordingly, on her character card, she's got an attack with her long rifle, which the best dice for that is when someone is four or more hexes away from her. So she's definitely a long-range uh, fighter, preferably. But if she gets up close, she does have that power blade, and she can spend two, two D8s, or not spend, she can roll two D8s to attack with that. So that's not bad. Pius Vorn here has this really cool flamer that she uses, but at the bottom of the flamer there's a chain blade, which is kind of fun. Uh, and so, again, she's got an attack with her flamer, she's got an attack with her chain blade, and a special attack if she spends a, a very high dice from her activation. She could take a, a special action, 2d12s, uh, to roll for that attack. Cleansing Flames, and everyone's got a character card, including the Hostiles. Potential Hostiles for the early game include the Urgul's, the Traitor Guardsmen, the Negavolt Cultists, and the Spindle Drones. And of course, they all have miniatures as well. That's pretty much all I need to do to set up, to be honest. There's not a whole lot left. Oh, there's one more thing. There's the encounter deck that I have to shuffle. The encounter deck lists the hostiles. So you've got the Urgles and the Negavolt uh, cultists and the Traitor Guardsmen and the Spindle Drones. Just repeated throughout. So um, I'll just really quickly... Shuffle those, I guess. Just kind of do a quick shuffle. And I think now we're ready to start the game. I think this is a really fun game because it actually has a pretty good variety of of activities. So starting with the exploration deck, they the brave explorers get onto the maglev chamber. They type in a code. And who knows where it takes them? Well, we'll find out where it takes them. Okay, so this is a challenge. This isn't a combat with the grid. 
This is a, sp a special challenge. So let's see what we've got. Masterful agility. Only the most agile of explorers can seize this prize. Deal out one discovery card for each explorer and place them face up in a row. In leader order, each explorer can attempt to take one of the cards. In order to take an Archaeotech card, the explorer must make a number of agility rolls equal to the card's value and not fail any of them. In order to take a clue card, oh, to take a clue card instead of an Archaeotech card, the explorers must make three agility rolls and not fail any of them. That's not going to ever happen. If an explorer fails any of the rolls, they suffer one wound for each roll they fail. Oof. That doesn't sound good. After each explorer that wishes to do so has attempted to take a card, any card that remain are shuffled back into the discovery deck. All right, that's our mission. So we have four explorers, and there is a discovery deck, which I will find buried in the box somewhere. So here's the discovery deck. I've got four four characters, so I'm just going to line them up just to kind of keep track of of who's trying what. Pius and Tadius. So there's one of them, and it said deal it face up. So there's an Archaeotech possibly for him, Archaeotech for Amelin, a clue for Pius. Not sure about that one, and Archaeotech. Okay. So this is actually pretty good, all things considered, um, because the number, the value of each Archaeotech is only one, which that seems reasonable. A clue a clue token or a clue card for for three agility rolls does not seem likely to me to be honest that just doesn't seem like that's going to happen um but we'll find out so agility is listed on character cards so the i think they're all going to be the triangle die it looks like on Janus Drake's it is uh agility the triangle dies which is a d8 which always confuses me because I think of a triangle as a d4. And these are special, these are special die. Um, they have success, they have empty sides, single successes, and critical successes. So Janus needs to make a roll and get one success. Well, there you go. One success. So he has acquired that card. Well, that was easy. Amelin Shadow Guide is... Oh, she is not a D8. Her agility is a D12 for her agility, so that's a lot better. Or it feels better, anyway. I don't know if it's actually better. It apparently is all right, so uh, that's a single success again. So she has got her... Archaeotech. This is going surprisingly well. Pius Vorn agility is a d8. So she, if she's going to try this, she needs to roll three successes without fail to get a clue card. That seems impossible to me. Okay, well, that's one success. So that's, that's good. Put that there. I do have one more uh, d8. Amazing. Critical success. So that is two, uh, two plus one is three successes. She got the clue card. I did not think that was going to happen. I honestly didn't think it was possible. Okay. Taddeus, what is his agility? A d6. So this one, I, I don't think I've ever rolled a success on this d6. That They do exist. There is one success available and one critical success. So we'll see what happens. Wow, okay. All right, so amazing. So, I mean, what a start. Wow, so everyone's gotten their 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 cards. That's huge. I mean, that's I, amazing. Okay, so, I mean, those are probably the best rolls we're going to see all game. All right, so they'll, they'll get back onto their little maglev chamber, type in a new code, 
and go to the next exploration card. But, uh, oh, what am I doing? So this was, uh, well, who cares? It doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put these under their character cards. That was Pius, I remember that. And that. So the Archaeotech, they can trade when they go back to Precipice. They can trade it for, like, upgrades and benefits and things like that. So that's one exploration uh, challenge achieved. So that's really great. Uh, had they acquired any wounds, at this point they could do a recovery step, I think. Because that might only be after combat, I'm not sure. But I'm going to guess that there's going to be combat next because that's just how things go. But it could be a ch No, it's, yeah, it's a combat. Okay, cool. So this is a combat card. And uh, this requires a little bit of setup, or a lot bit of setup. And I'm going to set it up kind of this way, just so that it hopefully fits mostly on screen. There are two potential exits. There's a portal here, which you can probably not see. And then another one up here, which you can barely see. So those are the escape. That's where our explorers need to get to in order to get out of this scenario alive. There are two markers. One group of bad guys goes here. That's their spawn point. And then I've just um, chopped up some sprues, some of the plastic framing that, that these miniatures came on and built little walls to represent cover. So these are basically half walls. They're, they don't go to the ceiling. You can, you can step over them, but more importantly, you can also duck behind them and get cover. So I just like having the 3D representation of that to make it really, really obvious when something has cover. Okay, the board has been set up. So we've got our explorers over here on frame right. We've got a dungeon sort of somewhere in the middle. I think that's the best angle I can possibly get, unfortunately. But I think it, I think that's fine. That'll work. Okay, so uh, the first step is to roll the destiny dice. and ignore any duplicates or triplicates, as the case may be. So I, ro I rolled three sixes, so I get to keep the one and three for later. I'm going to put that uh, up in... Well, technically I'm supposed to put it up in the space station. But if I do that, you won't see it on screen, and I'll probably forgive it, forget about it as well. So we're going to put it right there in the middle of the board, and actually to remind myself that these corridors have walls, I'm going to put walls there. And these are actual walls. Now there are walls all around this space, really. So these are walls, these are walls. Any edge, outer edge of a hex is a wall. Which, which matters, because uh, if someone's trying to shoot from here to there, that wouldn't work because there would be a wall there. Okay, so we've got Destiny Dice. Those are usable by anybody. Any character wants to use those, they can. Uh, any, any hero character can. Now I roll the Activation Dice for each character. Okay, so one, three, four, and six for Janus Drake. And I'm going to add those to his character card. And those are the dice values that he has to spend during his turn. Do the same thing for Taddeus the Purifier. 2, 3, 5, 5. Not bad. Taddeus the Purifier has a special ability if he spends a 6. He can heal people, heal himself and heal whoever is on his hex. So I like to see a 6 for Taddeus. Didn't get one. This is for Pius. 
So that's a two, four, four, six. That's not bad. She does have a special attack. I mean, everyone's going to like a six, right? I mean, that's that's a great roll. Six is a lot of numbers, um, and everyone's got a special attack for a six. But she has a very special attack for a six. Amelin wants fours. Uh, she didn't really get... I mean, she got a four. I would have loved to see more fours, because she does really good... Uh, she, she gets to re-roll attacks on a four, but oh well. Those are activation dice. They They get used during the turn of each explorer. I've got two tokens, two and one there, uh, so I just need to figure out what those encounters are going to be. And for that I turn to the encounter deck. So I need to draw two. So the first one is, uh, looks like they're spindle drones, and spindle, uh, since it's the one that I drew for, because it's the first card I drew, uh, then there are two spindle drones spawned at that location. Now, there may be yet more on the way. We don't know, but that is where they spawn. So there's two spindle drones there. And then the second card is Urgul's, which are the worst. I hate these guys. They're the second one that I drew, so they're, they're token two. And there are three of them. These guys are truly the worst. You will find out why eventually. They're small toke. They're they're small um, miniatures. They're twenty five millimeter bases, so three of them can fit into one space. So they all have cover in this little pin that they're hanging out in. That's going to make them harder to hit, obviously. But they're not going to stay in there for long, I don't think. So. On the initiative tracker, I'm going to place the spindle drones on one and the urgles on two. And then I take the initiative deck, I shuffle it, and this is an initiative deck built uh, with the four player characters and two tokens, for, for two hostile tokens. So this is the first round of initiative. One, two, and then all the good guys. So I will just treat this like a draw deck for simplicity. And I think I'll stop it there. We've, we've done one round of exploration. We're set up for the next encounter. So we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.